to another vlog. I thought I would start the vlog at home, even though I'm not gonna be here for the weekend. I'm actually kind of stressed. Um, my mum is coming in like six hours, but between now and then, I've got two articles to file and my newsletter to write for Patreon. So busy morning. I'm not used to doing this much writing in a day. Writing actually like sends my head into such a tizzy that I normally have to lie down, which I know sounds so dramatic, but I just mean, I think it's more looking at a screen for prolonged periods of time, like triggers my CTI and like other pain, neurological pain. So that's quite stressful. Um, but exciting, really exciting to be getting writing, like regularly commissioned to do stuff, which is really cool, getting money for it, crazy times. Um, and yeah, just want to say thank you to everyone who um, has signed up to Patreon. I appreciate it so much. I promise I won't talk about it in every video. Um, I know it's really boring if you don't want to be a part of it or can't be a part of it, whatever. But um, just thought I'd tell you I write my newsletter. And most of my newsletter now I'm actually writing about not reading and sort of like how my relationship to books has changed since I've become like so abreast of bookish things like been on here on Twitter on Instagram and sort of how I miss sometimes that carefree like I just want to dive into a book feeling um that I don't think is not even necessary about knowing the title or knowing the what the book is about it's more just like I don't know it's just like about the book books being like less of a almost like less habitual like I think the habitual nature of my reading means that I sometimes go on to autopilot when I read and I miss sort of I have this such vivid memory of when I read A Little Life which was like really soon after it came out a girl in my office was reading it and she was like you have to you have to read this book like I stayed up till 2am like you have to read it and I remember um like going home being like mum have you heard about this book have you heard about little life and she was like um oh yeah I've got it I've got it upstairs like um I had to stop reading Scory Sad my mum literally DNFs a book if something sad happens it's actually a problem I wish she liked the internet so she'd come and talk to you because she has honestly the strangest reading habits like she was reading I can't remember what book it was like a couple of months ago and she was like I thought the dog might die so I DNF'd and I was like mum come on but anyway, she was like, yeah, I've got upstairs and I remember taking it to the office and reading it on my commute and then reading it under my desk, like while my emails were really slow um, because I was like so obsessed with it. And I don't think I've had that kind of like, like fanaticism for a book since I became so online with books. I don't know. I'm not saying it's a negative thing. Like I obviously love the book community. I love this. I love writing about books. Like, um, and I never would have thought I would want to write a book. Well, no, that's not that. that I've always wanted to write a book, but I think I didn't realise, like, I wasn't actively pursuing writing a book or multiple books um, until I, like, saw other people doing it online kind of thing. And was like, oh, normal people write books, like, not just writers who write books. But I had a really deep and meaningful conversation with my friends last night about, like, writers and, like, what makes you a writer and sort of, I was basically having an existential crisis. <laughs> Anyway, this is a very long ramble to what I wanted to be a really low key weekend vlog because my mum's coming. Um, we're going to stay like in the centre of the city for the weekend. We're going to eat, we're going to drink, we're going to shop, we're going to buy books, and it's going to be glorious. So I'm probably just going to give you a few montage clips. I'll show you around our hotel room and I will um, haul anything that I buy, or more likely the book that she buys me. Do you have a bit of a list? I wanted to show you the book I'm reading right now. Please hold. Vlog. I actually got the candles burning because it's very autumnal this morning. The weather's still like warm in Amsterdam in the daytime. Oh, you're wonky, sorry. But it's not um, in the mornings and in the evenings. It's still, um, it's getting quite cold. I can't show you, but I'm burning the most gorgeous candle. It's so hot, sorry. Something I'm saying, sorry, I can't lift it up. My mum gave this to me for my birthday by Neom and it's called De-Stress and it smells like lavender and it's so delicious. I'm gonna have to try and source one this weekend because it's um, almost finished. Um, anyway, what, oh my God, look at this cute notebook I found from The Completist, who I love, make the best notebooks ever. Don't know where to get them in now I'm here, but um, have my induction for my master's course, which I'm still not 100% sure about. 
but started a new notebook, which is very exciting. Wow, I'm in such a rambly mood, can you tell I'm home alone? Tom's been going into the office and like out for events more and more, so I've like had a lot of time by myself and I forgot what it's like. It's really weird, I was like, I know lots of people were like happy to go back to work and I know he is like happy to go out to events and stuff, but I got really used to having him in the house all the time and now I'm like, hmm, strange. I'm trying to talk louder as well. Um, I just wanted to put a PSA. I know my video, my sound quality is not great. I think um, my phone got like torrentially rained on a few weeks ago and I think it's got worse since then. So maybe I'll take my phone to the Apple store. I am saving up for a camera. It's just not, my laptop's also about to break and I need my laptop for work and uni. So realistically my camera fund will probably go on my laptop, on a new laptop um, before I get a camera, which sucks because I've wanted one for ages. I know it will improve the sound quality. My friend actually sent me a microphone that I can attach for sit down videos, which I'm going to start using next week, but I can't use it. Like there's no point attaching it for vlogging on my phone because it would just pick up. It, it's like clips onto you and I'm not like going to walk around with it clipped onto me because it will just like muffle against my clothes and stuff. Like you need to be stationary. But I hear you on the audio. My, my One of my best friends actually messaged me who's like an audio nerd, like gets really upset when we watch films on a laptop without a speaker. <laughs> and then was like, Han, you got to sort your audio quality. So I hear you and I'm sorry. I am, it is like, it is on the list of things to do. It's just, I don't have the money to fork out for a camera right now, which sucks, um, but I will. I promise and thank you for watching. But anyway, the point was, I'm going to start talking louder, hopefully when at least I'm home alone. So then you can hear me better. Wow, this is a video of Ramble so far. I'm reading Inferno by Catherine Cho. Grace loved this. So, so uh, this was on my radar because it was on a book prize list. Which one? I can't tell you. The Bailey Glifford? Gordon Byrne? Not sure. Can't remember. But anyway, it was on a prize list. It has the word memoir and motherhood in the title. So obviously I wanted to read it. And then, yeah, Grace read it, loved it so much. And then I put it on Instagram and Simon said that um, he was like working with the author and she was brilliant. And I was like, okay, got to start it. And I just picked it up the other night when I really just couldn't settle on anything to read. And I've read the first 50 pages and I love it. It's the kind of book that you read that makes you want to write. Like it's so beautiful. The subline is a memoir of motherhood and mam madness. So it's Catherine Cho's experience um, with postpartum psychosis. She is checked into and like involuntary checked into a psychiatric ward in America while she's on a cross country trip with her husband and their new baby. Um, so we're just at the beginning where she's trying to piece together how she got there, why she's there. And we're flashing back to her childhood, the experiences she had growing up and sort of like how how she came to be there it's um super interesting the, the most beautiful writing i'll read you a couple of sentences it's super um like short and succinct some of the chapters which i really enjoy where's my favorite line I had never heard of postpartum psychosis before my own diagnosis pregnancy had brought a list of worries prolapse pre -eclamp preeclampsia. I was so preoccupied with the idea of losing my body. It had never occurred to me that I might lose my mind. You tell them, Catherine. Oh, amazing. And there was one more line I really loved. Um, so this is talking about when she gets finally issued a pen. So it says, you can have the pen, but you must be careful. The memories come slowly, stacking on top of one another, a picture slowly coming into focus. I feel I am con reconstructing myself from my memories and I'm following a thread from the past to the present and then I will know, I think. I will know how I got here and I will know who I am and maybe then I will be able to find a way to leave. It's just so beautiful, so vulnerable and um, yeah, just loving it so much so far. So that's what I'm reading right now. I did pack a fiction book in my bag for the weekend but if I started I would tell you about it anyway time to get on and write my commissions and then I will check in with you at dinner tonight
going to back to that square or something. Yeah. Merry Christmas. We just checked in and I picked up all my posts that my mum got me that she carried and was complaining made her bag so heavy. So let's unpack it. Hey friends, there was a brief interlude where I took a shower because I was feeling very hot and sweaty, but I wanted to show you the books that I got from my mom. Um, these are all like publishing proofs that she was hoarding for me. Um, some other ones came, but you already saw me talk about them in a... Wow, brain fog. Uh, my new releases video that went live before this. So let's talk about these ones instead. So first I got a parcel from Scribd and I got, actually this is kind of crazy because I got two graphic things in here and I like hardly own any. Excuse the dressing gown by the way, I'm just chilling out. I got the two week wait and IVF story by Luke and Kelly Jackson illustrated by Martha Wilde. So this is a beautiful, graphic memoir talking about the experience tom's nodding at me like i'm a weirdo um the experience of going through ivf i believe um kelly jackson has endometriosis which is really interesting and i think it's going to be a really beautiful exploration of trying to start a family so i'm really excited for that one i've seen this on scribd as well so if you are on there you can read it on your phone or your ipad and then also from um, Scribd, no, Scribe, <laughs> yeah, the, mother, the publisher is Scribe, the, the app where you read stuff is Scribd. This is like one of my favourite colour covers, I think it's so cool, The Union of Synchronised Swimmers by Christina Sandu. Um, love the cover, it's a tiny, slim little novel, I think my mum will really like this actually. So, it's the summer behind the Iron Curtain and six girls are going to swim their way to the Olympics and a new life. Um, so, scattered around the go, six women live in freedom, but will they ever will they ever be able to think about what they left behind? So the author is was born in Helsinki to a Finnish Romanian family. So yeah, it's all about commu like life in a communist country and using sport to escape a regime. Sounds so interesting. And yeah, I think I'll really enjoy that little novella. And then from the wonderful people, actually from my friend Shan as well, who um, is interning at Myriad Editions, who are a beautiful small indie press in Brighton. So that was always really nice. Um, they so kindly gifted me a copy of The Roles We Play, which you would have heard me talk about in a, I think, Books on My Radar video. Oh no, in my like almost bought video. Um, and then I swung to Shan and I was like, oh, would you have any um, copies for review? And so they sent me one. So this is um, a graphic novel slash memoir so Saba Khan's nuanced take on family faith and belonging uh like auto fictitious but in the graphic genre which is kind of confusing but so it's about um her British Pakistani um family so it says British Pakistani diaspora um trace their origins back to Mirpur in Kashmir a district that saw mass displacement and migration when it was submerged by the waters of a dam after partition so this graphic memoir explores identity and meaning for her and her family on the backdrop of the history to the partition, um, the snapshot of contemporary British Asian life and exploring generations. And that sounds brilliant. And yeah, again, I'm just really excited to own a graphic memoir to look through. Jalen got me one last, um, last year, N last month. So maybe I'll, I might do a vlog reading all three of them. That could be really fun. So that's that one. And then the last one, which I'm really excited for, doesn't come out for a while. This is from Picador. It's coming out on the 17th of February next year. Um, but I've heard loads of people talk about this new animal by Ella, Bax Ella Baxter. But I've heard loads of people talk about it because it was out in Australia. It's a debut Australian writer. And I saw the reviews when it came out in Australia from my Aussie bookstagram friends. So it sounds like it might be a little bit like boy parts slash Rooney slash coming of age, like messy millennial woman, um, Queenie, that vibe. So it says Amelia is no stranger to sex and death. Her job in her family's funeral parlor doing makeup on the dead is unusual, but she's good at it. But when she has a sudden loss that severs her ties to someone she loves, she sets off on a 72 hour, two hour mission to outrun her grief skips the funeral and goes to stay with her dad, experimenting with, in the local Tasmanian BDSM scene. So yeah, that's what makes me think it's going to be about. That's why I'm getting the boy part vibes from the like 
outrageous, like super um, extreme. So it says a bruising encounter with a stranger and a recognition of her body's own limits is the only thing that will bring Amelia back to herself. So yeah, sounds really interesting. Excited to read it again, quite short. Um, and then the three that you would have seen me already talk about are The Woman from Uruguay, Dog Park, and things I didn't throw out. I love how they've made the proof for things I didn't throw out the cover to look so much like the, the actual cover that's coming out. Whereas like the blue and three ones are just like this, which is still fine, but love that a lot. So anyway, going to rest read some more of my book and get ready to go out for a meal with my mum. I'm just so happy to have her here. So I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. There's no full length mirror in here, but I want to show my outfit because I think it looks really cool. Actually, I could just get Tom to film for me. I'm just going to do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I'm going to show my outfit because I'm wearing my cowboy boots again, which I feel like are going to be a staple this autumn. For me and this dress is warehouse you would have seen me haul it like a, those months ago and then i never really wore it but i think it's really cute it's like my blonde hair i was going to put orange lipstick on but i can't really be bothered uh. <laughs> anyway we're off for drinks i'll show you tom's outfit tell the people hello do you guys your shirt from korea yeah you can't buy that one down south korea you're Trousers are Carhartt. And your shoes are Birkenstocks. Yes. It's like weird weather, isn't it? It's like warm, but not really warm. Yes. These are the vibes. Let's go get a drink. It's really cool, guys. I don't know how to show you. Do you want me to take a picture of you? No, it like shit. I think if you can't do like, you know, like that. No, the, ho the hotel is not looking cute on the film. It is no, it's because it's dark. Right? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> going to bed, give you a book call in the morning. Hey friends, um, thought I would just show you the books I bought yesterday. I, wow, well, look really washed out because I think Dan's washed off. Went to the sauna and the pool with my mum this morning. Um, haven't done many talking clips, honestly, because I have not been feeling great and having such a hard time balancing, like having my mum here and wanting to hang out and show her our new home versus like actually not being very well at all. But anyway, um, to show you what I bought yesterday. Well, firstly, my mum bought me this gorgeous new, like, oversized stripy top from the men's section of Arquette, which was a treat. And then I bought a couple of books in the American Book Centre. I was actually looking for the right to sex, but um, the gender section at um, the American Book Centre is quite small. It wasn't in there and I couldn't find it in social science so I might order it or look at one more bookstore today or tomorrow. <laughs> and I've wanted it since it came out and I don't know why I didn't request the proof and then Jay's reading it right now and really loves it so I'm excited for that but these are the two books I got first I got this cute Matisse card which I think I'm very even put in the kitchen because my new living room and kitchen is like this is the accent colour so I just picked that up for like two years I finally caved and bought The Acts of Desperation by Megan Nolan because I watched some clips of her doing some interviews and I was like, oh, I just need to buy this because I was like waiting for it to come in on the Kobu, like go on discount, but it just wouldn't. Um, she's a contemporary Irish writer writing about um, problematic, abusive uh, relationships. So 
yeah, I'm excited, like, coming of age millennial fiction, but quite dark. I know people are comparing it to, or people have compared it to Magma, which I haven't read, and Grace read, which is like an Icelandic book on abusive relationships. Um, so I thought I would read this one first. Don't hate the cover, don't love the cover. Um, so those are what I bought. In terms of reading, I actually haven't read hardly anything because I just go to bed and pass out after um, dinner. I've been listening to an amazing podcast series that if you listen, if you read my Patreon news essay, you would have heard about. And yeah, that's about it. We're going to take my mum to like back to our side of the city, show her our apartment, our neighbourhood, grab a bite to eat maybe. The sun's like really trying, it rained overnight. But um, yeah, just going to have a chill one today, I think. Guys, I think something's up with my phone camera. Um Please tell me if this clip looks any different to the last clip or if all the clips in this vlog seem really weird. And oh my God, why should I go blonde when I have to fake tan in order to not look like a ghost all the time? Anyway, I'm about to sign into my first seminar of the semester, baby. To be honest, I'm really not looking forward to it. I'm so tired and I just made this whole timetable for the week of like, what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna try and work. So I really don't want to give up writing. Not give up, obviously I would never give up, but I mean, I really want to keep consistently being able to uh, pitch and get commissioned and publish stuff so that I can keep that ticking over. Um, I'm also like reworking a book proposal right now that I really want, like by the end of the year, I'd love to get it sent off to publishers. And then, this as in you guys youtube i just feel like it's a lot and i don't know um but i think it's just like a suck it and see situation if i get like a month into my masters and realize that it's not feasible then i think i will move it to part time but anyway i'm about to sign in to a seminar on research methods which is like so boring um i already know that I'm, it's gonna be really boring tom's making pasta from our like recipe box and that's gonna be the evening I think um so I will get back to you when I've finished Catherine Cho's book and we will catch up then friends i'm just in bed trying to start a new routine of like getting off my phone like i am so sick of how much time i spend on it which i know is no one's problem except my own but i was just chatting to cj about it and i like know that so many other people struggle with it and i really let all of my good habits and rituals sort of um decline quite rapidly really since the pandemic and then i tried to pick them back up and then post-surgery in March I just sort of let it all go and was rightfully so like I was letting myself just you know use my phone as an escape and doom scrolling and all that stuff but I really after like evaluating what I want to try and achieve by the end of the year in terms of like writing studying all these things that like I know I want to do not out of some weird toxic pro productivity thing but like I know bring me joy and I know fulfill me and when I look at like how I can plan my day and eff effectively use my time when I'm feeling well like the biggest drain on my time is fucking this device that I'm staring at right now and um I just really want to kick it this is not a like shame on you if you also are um a person who spends a lot of time with their phone like if you're happy doing that that's 
who am I to judge? I just want to kick the habit for myself. So I thought it'd be interesting to like fill you in on that as I go about that journey. I thought that might be interesting. Yeah. Hello friends. I don't think I've checked in for a couple of days. Honestly, I haven't been having a very good mental health week and uni obviously has been kicking my butt. But I want to show you something really exciting. Not the absolute mess of our living room right now, but we have a bed. I don't know if we really like fully explained what happened. Basically, we've been sleeping on a mattress since like, we slept on an air bed for a week. Then we slept on the sofa because the air bed was so squeaky. Then we bought a bed that's over there, that's metal that was also so squeaky. It was, then I went back sleeping on the sofa. Then we bought a bed in the wrong size. Now we have a new bed that's finally being built. Here is Tom constructing it. In the end, we just got it from made.com. It's like not 100% my style, but um, at my mum's house, I have this in my bedroom there in yellow. And like, I know it's really comfy. I know the headboard's really comfy. And honestly, upholstered beds are really expensive. So this was the best value for something upholstered. I didn't want a divan bed because the space is really narrow. This is our mattress. Anyway, Tom's doing a beautiful job of constructing it and I will show you it properly once it's all put together. Morning friends, I feel like I look like I'm auditioning for the Gossip Girl reboot. Blair or what was the other one called? I used to love Gossip Girl. Anyway, I'll show you my outfit, then let's talk about books. Excuse the slippers, they are obviously for home. But they are so comfy. I got them on Depop, they're the new UGG. Well not new, but like the UGG ones, everyone wears. So my blouse and my sweater vest are and other stories, so it's my headband. Wow, I'm a walking advert and other stories today. Um, the sweater vest is old, the shirt is new. The trousers are eBay, like a gingham lightweight one. The fake tan is my own. The jewellery is from my last partnership with Anna Luisa. And that's the look. Let's talk about books, I think. Also, Tom put our bed together and doesn't it look cute? You saw me making it. It's quite basic. Like, I would have loved to have got a colour headboard, but made.com, where we got the bed, didn't really have any that I enjoyed that were not like a 10 week wait away. Um, right, let me grab the books and we can talk. Okay, so I um, finished Susan Sontag's. AIDS is a metaphor, illness is a metaphor, really enjoyed it. I think I don't know if I spoke about that in this video or my last video, my last vlog, but you will see me wrap that up. Um, I'm going to start a new audiobook today. It's Thursday. Did I already say that? Wow, well, very scatterbrained today. Thursday and Tom goes into work early because he teaches on a Thursday. So I'm normally like up, but I don't have uni classes. So like have a slow morning read in bed like I want Thursday mornings to sort of be my time off I was trying to schedule my week to have a four-day week sort of like with uni and writing work and YouTube but realistically I don't think that's going to happen I think I just need to do like a little bit every day but I'm kind of giving myself Thursday mornings off to just like chill recalibrate rest because I get up early on days I have uni class so I can like study in the morning anyway I'm trying to get a new routine down but I think I'm also going to change my YouTube schedule to two videos a week. I do sometimes do three videos, but I think realistically I need to move to two. And I think I'm going to make my upload days, Thursdays and Sundays, one vlog, one sit down video. Let me know the vibes on that. Um, books. I started and finished The Union of Synchronised Swimmers by Christina Sandu. You saw me hold this earlier in the vlog. I was sent it by Scribe and my mum brought it over to me. 
So um, the author is Finnish Romanian. She speaks six languages. Jesus Christ, you ever just read stuff like that and you're like, I'm a fucking idiot. I can barely speak English. Um, this was a really weird little novella collection of short story prose kind of thing. So it's set in um, behind the Iron Cast and in an unnamed country. Um, and it's sort of talking about the experience of these um, girls learning to synchronise swim in a river and then using that as an opportunity to flee the country where they were um, experiencing persecution. And then each of the chapters starts with um, sort of like their journey to leaving. So them learning to swim, them getting the kit, them going to the swimming pool. And then the other side of the sort of each of the chapters is following one of the girls and what they ended up doing in all different parts of the world, in Italy, America. Romania, um, yeah, it was really interesting, um, commenting a lot on resources and sort of this idea of distribution of resources, which is weirdly something I was like um, studying in a seminar this week, a dis distributive justice. But um, I think this is commenting a lot on that and this idea of the postcode lottery or like where you're born and what that means um, for your future and this idea of outrunning your past. Um, I think it's really interesting. It's very uh, vague isn't the right word, but it's like um, you only get tidbits of each of these women's lives and it's very much a, you know, a slice of life and insight into it. And um, I normally am okay with that, but in this context, I felt like quite unsatisfied with the story endings um, and I wanted sort of some finality in the story which I didn't seem to get but yeah it was a really interesting like quirky little read and then I have probably 50 pages to go with Inferno by Catherine Cho I probably will finish this today and it's beautiful, but it's forgetting, it's becoming increasingly harder to read. So it's sort of like these two narratives are um, coming to meet in the middle. So you've got Catherine, her experience of her childhood, meeting her um, first romantic partner who ended up abusing her, and then her meeting her current husband, James, them deciding to have their baby. You sort of have that coming this way and then you have the time she's spending longer and longer in the psychiatric ward and the experiences with the different um roommates that she has and then the uh, james coming to visit and sort of getting closer to um leaving but as we're following this path of her um in the past we're now at the part where she is um experiencing psychosis for the first time she's in this hotel room with her husband and their baby and she sees like devil's eyes in um, her baby and obviously that's going to collide with the first night that she ends up spending in the psychiatric ward so I think that's a really poignant way of looking at it this idea of like before I got sick and after I got sick and um, something I think about a lot in my own writing and also just like living my life as a sick person um so I think that is really uh, a really good narrative structure it just makes it harder to read because you're anticipating what will happen hard in the sense of like emotionally taxing not hard as in dense um but yeah it's brilliant so well written so vulnerable and um astute in the observations of the system that she is a part of obviously written in retrospect at the time she wasn't aware of all the things that were at play but yeah absolutely brilliant i will try and put some words together um on my instagram review for this one and you'll see it in a wrap up so that being said thank you so much for watching this vlog i feel like it was a bit nothing key maybe but um i'll be back next week with a new one hopefully get into a better routine with studying life work and i'll see you all then thank you so much for watching bye bye